It is good to be here at Beavertown, and I would ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word and turn in your Bibles to Job, the book of Job, Job chapter 37. We all know that my sister would like to preach, and no one wants me to preach, but uh, I'm just so thankful for what God's done in my life. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And it's good to be in the work of the Lord. I must admit, some of the roughest crew that comes through Mount Pleasant, Iowa, is from this congregation. And so with fear and trembling, I preach again to Doug and Kevin and Caden and Jerry Yoder and people like you all that I love so much. Job chapter 37, verse 5. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doth he which we cannot comprehend. And I'm going to ask my mother to pray over the reading of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. Great things doth he, which we cannot comprehend. Every person here in this beautiful sanctuary this evening, we all have faced situations bigger than ourselves, problems we did not ever think we would ever face, heartaches we could have never imagined from everyday challenges to life-altering moments in time, we are reminded that we need God. How do we pay bills that are greater than our income? How do we live with fears beyond our ability to fight, things that are out of our control? How do we deal with sorrow that's real, the pain of losing someone that we love? How do we survive when it seems as though our faith is way too small? How are we victorious over things that are too strong for us? Temptation. The devil is so mean. The devil does have power. But I came here this evening to remind us that the God that we serve is greater than our situation. May this Easter season, may may all year long, but may this Easter season be a reminder to us all that our God is not dead, but He is alive. The one that we serve is greater. Greater than what we face today. Greater than anything we will ever face. Greater... Than, than the problems that you're dealing with this evening. God is big enough for your need. Great things does He which we cannot comprehend. First this evening, I want to remind us that God is greater than our fear. There is a song that speaks about fear. It says, when He told you that you're not good enough, when He told you you're not right, when He told you you're not strong enough, to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, you'll never be enough, when he told you you were troubled, you'll forever be alone, when he told you you should just run away, you'll never find a home, when he told you you were dirty and you should be ashamed, when he told you you could be the one that grace could never change, oh fear, he is a liar." I'm thankful this evening that fear is a liar. Satan is a liar. From the young mother in our church in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, raising two boys, God is really helping her in her life. And she came to my wife the other day after reading the easy book of Romans. And with tears streaming down her face, she was reminded of all the sin that once had controlled her life, ashamed of what she had done. New Christian here tonight. Satan will say, you cannot make it. You've done too much. When he told you that you could be the one that grace could never change, aren't you thankful that fear is a liar? God is bigger than your fear. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. We do not have to read in Scripture long for fear to spring up. It appears first in Genesis, disobedience brings fear. God told Adam and Eve, you can eat from all the trees, but don't eat from this one. In a perfect garden with all this world has to offer, they broke their relationship with God with a choice. Sin entered the world. God shows up for what seems to be 
a, his routine, his daily walk with them in the garden, he calls out looking for, for them. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, it says, And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. In sin, fear controls, but this evening, God in His power, where there was fear, there can be grace and peace. God was here before fear entered the scene. In Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God, God will still be here when all the fears of history are destroyed. Are you troubled tonight? Are there situations that cause you to worry? Fear for your family, fear for the future. God is greater than our fear. From Genesis, in the beginning God, until Revelation, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God is greater than our problems, our trouble, our fear this evening. Scripture tells us the fear nots of the Bible. I want to share some of them with you tonight. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. Joseph said, fear not. Fear not, neither be discouraged. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Fear not. The gods of the Amorites, fear not, thou shalt not die. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Fear not, Daniel. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. We think of all these people throughout Scripture. We, I mean, we, we grow up going to vacation Bible school, Sunday school. I remember over in the old church, the Noah's, the ark room with all the animals. You know, we, we know these stories, but you think of these people in the Bible. Names like Daniel, Moses, Joshua, and David. They conquered fear just like God wants us to conquer fear today because they chose to trust in God. They chose to trust in one greater than their fear. This evening I believe that there is one in heaven that's concerned about your fear. God is greater, but I believe He is asking us this evening, will you choose to trust? There's a chorus we sing here, bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see, bigger than all my questions, bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path, bigger than all the confusion, bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief. God is bigger. And I'm glad tonight for these words, great things doth he which we cannot comprehend. God is greater than our fear. The second thing I'd like to remind us of is that God is bigger than our finances. God is bigger than our finances. I think back when Beavertown Church started this faith project. Who remembers that? For us kids that were here, we we, uh, wore the crazy yellow hats. We had no clue what all the faith project meant. Uh, your pastor tries to make everything a big deal, as you know. Remember the unveiling of what the new church would look like? Remember that for, I don't know how long, it seemed like years, but, you know, in the back of the church. Uh, the many little pew that, you know, this side versus this guy could fight over which one was more comfortable. The groundbreaking service, but the faith project was going to cost a lot of money. And that's what the older folks were worried about. And it did cost a lot of money. But last year, as a church, you were reminded of the faithfulness of God as you were able to pay off early the loan for this project. We still serve a God that cares about the finances. If you're here this evening, you're serving God, but it seems like you don't have what you need. I want to tell you that God is bigger than your bank account. You might not have a lot, but God is going to take care of his child. We've all caught ourselves saying money does not grow on trees. And it's true. I I mean, I don't really care that much about trees, except about one time of the year. But, you know, money does not grow on trees. It's true. People are nervous about money. According to a survey done that I read about, some of the things that people are most worried about are finances. Not being able to pay the medical bills when you're sick. Social security going completely, you know, bust. Just completely being uh, out of the scene. People worry about everyday bills. Groceries, insurance, electricity, our phones. Isn't it crazy to think that the, the most powerful nation in the world, really we care so much the election might come down to just little things like groceries, gas, finances. Fuel seems to get more and more expensive. These, these things are things that concern us financially. 
People worry that they won't have enough money to retire. People worry about their inheritance. I sure am. <laughs> and people worry about the stock market. But God is bigger than your finances. God's storehouse is greater than the American economy. Amen? We can dream big dreams. We can act on faith. We can serve God to the fullest because we serve the same God. And He does that which we cannot comprehend. I don't know if or what you are troubled about this evening financially, but Scripture tells us, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's not a promise that He wants you to have what you want. I've learned that. You know, the new truck, the new home. But what the verse is saying, if you need a vehicle, if your need is a home, if your need is something like an electric bill that's sitting on the counter, on top of the fridge, the groceries for the week, the insurance for the month, not what we think, but God knows what we need and He gives us exactly that. Well, God, I prayed that you would supply my $2,500 car payment and you have not. Well... Maybe it's God's will that I sell that vehicle that I poorly purchased out of His will. Get a job, work hard, and buy something with cash. Something that I can afford. It's as simple as asking God in the everyday decisions of our lives, God, is this something that I should buy? Is this something that I should invest in? Is this something I should give to? Is this your will? Because if it is God's will, we can trust that He will provide. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth. One of the greatest miracles is that God gives us the health and the power to work with our hands to receive what we need. Thank God for hard workers and great givers that have been the backbone of this church and this ministry here. God is greater than our finances. God still owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but many times that cattle and money does not just fall from the sky. He allows us to work hard for His glory that our need in His will might be met. Luke 6, verse 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Look at the blessings that God does if we just give back to Him. Yes, God can cleanse us from sin. And we can become a Christian and we can walk in all known light. But maybe this week you're discouraged. I mean, you're, even before the week, you know, the week's just beginning and you're discouraged, Brother Randall. It's revival. You want to be here each night. No one knows your need. You come to church and you smile and you worship the Lord. But nobody knows the financial burden. I mean, you're serving the Lord. You're thankful for the peace that God's given you. But nobody knows the financial burden you're facing but I'm thankful that God sees your need. I thank the Lord. God is greater than that need. If it's His will, we can rest assured that God will supply it. Pastor Jones was a retired Methodist minister living in the state of Mississippi at the time of Hurricane Katrina. Jones and his wife left their home like many people did before the storm hit not knowing what would be left when they would have the opportunity to return. After the storm passed, the Jones were permitted to come to their storm-destroyed community and grab a few belongings from the wreckage of their home. What a sad scene to see for, these, for this couple, for them to think of all the memories, their neighbors, those that they had watched live life, the, the kids that had played together in their street, memories that had been made, but it's all gone. The remains of their humble little home, waterlogged and blown apart. On their street, homes were completely missing. Businesses in such sad repair that the first thing that came to your mind was that it's never going to open again. It was as if they had had a bad dream and they woke up and yet they realized that it was just, it was life. A nightmare, so much work to do, so many left with nothing. When the pastor and his wife entered what was, the, what was left of their once lovely, cozy home, the water was still knee high. The damage was extreme. But naturally, they were determined, like we would be, to salvage anything that they could you know, take home and, and remember of what used to be. The reality was that there was not much left. 
Even though these were, these were people that had given of their lives, they had prayed, they had lived a life of faith, their home and their stuff was pretty much gone. In one room, Mr. Jones saw several framed family photos floating in the water. With nothing else to salvage of any worth, he, he picked up those photos and took them with him, tears flowing down his face. He made his way back to the shelter where they were staying. He took the photos out of the album and out of the frames. And hopefully that they would dry out and he'd be able to preserve the history. And to his amazement, when he removed his father's picture, money fell out of the frame. He could not believe his eyes as he counted nearly $400. His father had died in 1942 when the pastor himself was only 12 he had no idea for all those years the money was hidden behind the picture. Did $400 rebuild the home? No. Did $400 solve all their issues? No. Did $400 bring back the street and the community that they knew and they loved? No. But $400 did remind that pastor and his wife in a time of uncertainty in the storm that God saw right where they were. You know, God may not meet every need like we think He should, but if we will trust Him, we will begin seeing His hand. We will begin seeing the $400, what He knows we need, because God is greater than our finances. You may never be rich here in this world, but with God we are never bankrupt. Amen? Our text reminds us of the story of Job. The story of Job was not one of sorrow and grief, but rather a spiritual battle. God may allow Satan to touch your things. You may lose all your money. You may lose your job. This is what we learn from Job's life. Hardly two pennies to scratch together. But rest confidently. God is greater than what we have and what he's given us. We can lose all this world like Job did. All his children are gone. His land, his animals, his money, his boils all over his body. And yet God gave Job blessing and never left his soul. We live in a world where money seems to be everything. But you make God and following him your everything. And you'll find he is greater than your need. Great things does he which we cannot comprehend. The third this evening, God is greater than our faith. God is greater than than our faith. What do you mean, preacher? Doesn't God give us faith? Well, He calls us to trust. He calls us to believe. But have you ever had, found someone that had just faith just so far? May we remember it's not in our strength. It's nothing that we can do, but rather great things does He which we cannot comprehend. So many people talk about their faith. If you look at their social media, we live in a day where Scripture is talked about more than ever. They will talk about how they trusted the plan. Uh, maybe it's someone that's a life coach or a financial person, a, a, an athlete. Maybe somebody that's been successful and thank the Lord for you know, their success. And we trust that they do know a personal relationship with God. But they put on Instagram or TikTok, hashtag God's plan. Have you ever seen things like this? Hashtag God's will. Hashtag God's timing. Don't get me wrong. We ought to give God praise in the good times and the bad. But so many times it seems that so many take glory in what God has done. We get such a shallow idea of faith. But I want to tell you God is greater than we are. God is greater than your plan. God is greater than your budget. God is greater than... Than, than what you think is going to happen. God can see the big picture, Brother Jerry. This evening, for your family, for our church, we must remember that God is greater than, than our faith. If you're righteous, it's only because of His righteousness. If you're wealthy, it's only because of 
His wealth, His grace and mercy is greater than our sin. Matthew chapter 17 gives us the idea of faith and what our faith ought to be and the power of putting our faith and trust in God. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. The Scripture teaches it's not how much faith we have or the size of our faith, but rather how big our God is. How big is the one that your faith is in? If we can just catch a glimpse the size of a mustard seed, put our trust in Him, if we can recognize maybe not the full plan, but just today's plan that God wants us to to walk therein, if we can recognize the power and glory of God, nothing shall be impossible. God is greater than your faith. How big is God? How big and wide His vast domain To try to tell, these lips can only start. He's big enough to rule his mighty universe, yet small enough to live within my heart. Our faith can be anchored in Christ Jesus tonight. God a problem, God a river you think is uncrossable. Great things does he which we cannot comprehend. God is greater than our faith. We find examples in Scripture. It was his servant Moses that did as God commanded. But God was bigger than Moses' faith because through the power of God, the waters were parted. We find two sisters in Scripture, Mary and Martha, their brother in, in dire need. Lazarus is sick. He's dying. They have faith that the Lord can heal his sickness and heal their brother, but Jesus does not show up. We find that when he arrives, Martha the sister says to Jesus, By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. No doubt their grief had begun, their faith was gone. But may we never forget that God is greater than our faith. God sees the big picture. What we cannot see, God can. When to us it seemed like all was lost, the Lord speaks to the grave. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. The sisters had faith. They believed God could, but not that late. Not that big. I mean, you know, that much faith? God, really? But God is greater than our faith. Four days in the grave, he stinks. Lazarus come forth. Great things doth he, which we cannot comprehend. God is still in the business of doing miracles. Greater than our finances, our fears, our faith. Finally this evening, God is greater than our fight. God is greater than our fight. I hope that you don't fight with your wife. I'm thankful for a wife that is just, I'm so blessed, truly. I hope that you don't fight as a family. I hope that you don't fight at work. I hope uh, that you don't fight at school. But we all are in a fight. I don't know what you're struggling with in your life, in your spiritual walk. Maybe it is faith. But you're in a fight. There's a spiritual warfare. The devil is fighting for each of our souls. But thanks be to God, we can win this fight. We can be a conqueror. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. Powerful words. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. You might feel like you're being bombarded by life. You're overwhelmed. I'm so glad that I can stand here today and tell you that God sees where you're at. This battle does not take him by surprise. This struggle that your family is going through, that you're personally going through, that nobody knows about, it doesn't take him by surprise. He's got the whole world in his hands, but to think that he cares about you and I personally. Listen, a preacher like myself can stand behind a pulpit like tonight. And I can try to encourage you, like I'm trying to tonight. Maybe one of your four pastors can do their best to bear your burden, put you on the prayer list and call you daily. But I'm forever indebted to the one that is greater than our fight. 
The psalmist tells us, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. We can call upon the Lord no matter the day, no matter the hour, 24-7. God is available and able to meet your need. Great things does he which we cannot comprehend. My question tonight is, will you trust in the sovereign plans of God? you trust in the sovereign plans of God? During the Korean War, when the Chinese joined the fight and moved south from North Korea, thousands were trying to flee. A Christian woman was in the path of the communist advance. Her heart of love and had reached out to the orphans in her area and and refugee children stuck in the middle of fighting and war. She had 40-some kids living in her personal home when the attacks began. She, she began her escape south, taking her children, ranging from young toddlers to teenagers. The older ones would, would help and carry and escort the, the younger to safety. They would walk by day and, and, and shelter where they could at night, many times just alongside the road or wherever that she felt like it would be safe. One night, this Christian and her kids reached a village where they were offered a nice shelter by a kind old man whose family had already fled further south, but because of his health, he felt as he couldn't. Finally, everyone, herself, because of her love and reaching out, these 40-some kids, these orphans, under the same roof, a good shelter, safe place. After the devotions that night with the children, she committed them to the Lord and for the night, and she bedded down on the floor. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, she was awakened by the Lord with a sense of imminent danger. The inner voice of the Lord told her to take the children at once and leave. The safest place they had been since the journey. She she awakened the children out, out of an urgency of what she felt like God was telling her. And she told the old man that she that she felt like she should leave, but he refused to, to, to go out in the middle of the night. Accept her warning. In the middle of the night, she led these 40-some orphan kids several hundred yards to the middle of the community, down the street, to where there was a large tree. And she felt as if God said, you should stay here. It was only moments later that a bomb fell on the house where they had just been sheltered and completely destroyed everything. The town began hearing the the noise of the bomb. The town began gathering around the smoldering ruins, weeping and searching for the bodies of the children. They knew the orphans had sheltered there for the night with the older man. The Christian woman came up, coming up the street, yelled out, called out to the people not to weep, for the children were safe. She testified how the Lord had guided her to safety and told them of the story and how good God has been. You know, God is greater than our fight. God sees what we cannot. David faced the giant. Daniel faced the den. Moses faced the desert. Rest assured this evening, you can trust him with your life. When Satan is lined up, sights on your soul. I mean, for for your family, he wants to destroy you. Just, Just rest assured that God is greater than your fight. When we don't know what lies ahead... When we cannot see into the future, we cannot see into the darkness time and time again, we can say as we trust Him. Job 37 verse 5, God thundereth marvelously with His voice, great things doth He which we cannot comprehend. Aren't you thankful for the things that we could have never imagined if it wasn't for the grace of God? I'm so thankful that we can put our faith and trust in Him.